Okay, welcome back keyboard fundamentals folks. I apologize in advance if you can hear my dog chewing on his bone in the background. It just can't be helped at this point, so it is what it is. Um, we're going to go in a little different direction than the music fundamentals class. Uh, they're moving on to uh, the, the theoretical side of full major scales, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. We're going to stick for this week with five tone scales. Um, it just goes do, re, mi, fa, sol, and then back down again. Um, the simple reason being you're actually playing these things unlike that class, um, or at least you're playing more of it, and you have five fingers, right? We have finger one, two, three, four, and five. Now I'm gonna demonstrate everything with my right hand, but if you're left-handed and you prefer to play these with your left hand, you can just know that whenever I talk about moving my thumb up and down, you would be thinking about moving your pinky up and down the keyboard, okay? So I would actually recommend, even if you are left-handed, give the right hand a shot because a lot of what we do um, in this class, you're gonna end up using both eventually, um, but being able to play those five-tone scales with your five fingers um, is, is very useful. You might recognize as we do this, it sounds an awful lot like pretty much every choir warm-up known to man, right? So we're going to start at middle C, handy dandy middle C. There it is. And I'm going to throw my thumb on there. There it is. And our five-tone scales, all they do is we're going to, or at least the way we're going to be doing it, so we're going to start on your thumb, we're going to go all the way up to your pinky, and back down again. Now, if you're using a virtual piano um, and you just want to play it like this, again, that's always an option, but I'm going to teach it as if people have a keyboard or a piano so that you can, uh, you can use the real fingering. So you're going to stick with one finger per key. If I were to play them all down together, this is what it would look like. And the full exercise is going to start at the thumb, go up to the pinky and back down again. left hand I could do the same thing in a mirror image but I'm going to start with my pinky on the C below that right it's a start to just about every warm-up ever right so I just played a five-tone scale with both my hands you could use just one if you wanted and all I used were the white notes okay now if I wanted to move that around maybe I don't want to be this low maybe I want to do a five-tone scale up here which would be awesome, but I'm gonna have to do it differently. No matter where you start, wherever you put that thumb, doesn't matter which note you start on, you're always going to have the same combination of whole steps and half steps to make it sound like do, re, mi, fa, so. You're always going to have a whole step, followed by a whole step, then a half step, then a whole step. Always. Okay, so I'm gonna choose a random note here. Let's go with A. Okay, so if I wanna play a five tone scale starting on A, I'm gonna start with my whole step. I need another whole step, which would go here, right? Because this would just be a half step, so this would be a whole step. Then a half step. Then a whole step. So if I play them all together. and then back down again. I can also start on a black note. I don't have to play just on the white notes. I could start on a black note. I'm gonna start right here. So we're gonna do the same combination of whole steps and half steps. So we have whole, whole, half, whole. Here's your first whole step, second whole step, half step, then a whole step. I'm gonna throw my thumb on there, and I'm gonna make my hand go a little farther this way on the keys. If I try to do it back here, I'm gonna get my thumb shorter than all the other all the other fingers, right? So I have to go with my thumb, being able to reach that note, and it's okay to play this one a little farther up on the note and all the way back here, because you don't wanna have something like this happen and have to move your hand out. So instead, just play them all up here. Get any idea? Now, when we move that thumb around, when we change where Do starts, what we're doing is taking a set of pitches and we're moving them around, having the same relationship to each other. And when we do that, it's called transposing, right? So I can play as a warm up, say in choir. I'm adding some chords on my left hand, but you get the idea. If I want to do that again, I can transpose it up to the next black note. I use the same whole steps and half steps. Get the 
idea? Okay, so this week what I'd like you to try to do is use your whole steps and half steps to try to find a full set of five tone scales starting on middle C and work your way up by half steps. Move that thumb all the way through each set of two and three black notes and then you can stop when you get here because you're back to C again. Okay, so if I was doing that ridiculously fast, it would look something like this. And so on and so forth. You can go as slow as you want, but that's the idea. You're moving that thumb up by half steps and using the same combination of whole steps and half steps to transpose this idea up to a higher set of pitches. Now if you get really good at your right hand, transposing up, you can do what I did earlier and you can start mirroring with your left hand an octave lower. If I'm starting on a C with my right thumb, I'm going to start on the C below with my left pinky and do the exact same thing. and so forth. The other thing you can do is if you hadn't figured out in your five tone scales, if you use finger one, finger three, and finger five, so the outside two fingers and the middle finger, you're gonna make a major chord. Okay, I'm gonna pull those fingers back so you can kind of see it. It's these, these notes, right? So if you want to start doing the transitions like you might in a choir warm-up, you can. First you do the five tone scale. You play your chord, there it is, I'm going to change fingers so you can see it, and then you play your chord up a half step. You've heard this a trillion times, I think. And those chord transitions, you're simply using the same combination of half steps and whole steps each time, you're just playing with these three fingers to make that chord. So that's one thing you can add, and you can even do it in both hands. time you have a substitute in class, you could possibly lead some choir warm-ups, yeah? With that. Okay, another option is that you could, with your left hand, and this is this is totally optional. If this totally confuses you, then don't do it. Um, but if you're a little bit more familiar with keyboard, you know that you can often go back and forth between those chords that we just talked about with one, three, and five. Um, and you can also drop this pinky down to the note below and then use these two to make a seventh chord. Now again, if that's confusing to you, don't worry about it. But if you go back and forth between that chord and that chord, I'm gonna try to do it with my hands like this so you can see the keys. With your left hand, it fits really well with your, your five tone scale on your right hand. Okay, and you can do that in any key. and you want to add those extra chords in the bottom, go for it. If it, it seems confusing or if your, your left hand is just not cooperating, because oftentimes our left hands, especially those right-handed of us, um, our, our left hands can be stubborn and, and dumb sometimes, particularly our pinkies, by the way. If you find that you play these uh, and, and your pinkies on either hand just don't want to do the right thing, that's why. We're used to gripping things, and these fingers have quite a bit of independence, but these fingers on the outside tend to do whatever the rest of the fingers are doing, okay? So if you find that your pinky is moving when you don't want it to move, it's just kind of moving with the other fingers, um, it's always a good idea to practice independently, just tapping a table like this one finger at a time. I've also seen uh, beginning piano students try this fun little trick where you separate your hands like this, then together, and then the outside fingers together, separate together, outside together, until it becomes kind of a party trick. How fast can you go? <laughs> that can help with a little bit of the independence as well. But these five tone scales actually really do help um, with, uh, with the, the independence of your fingers, which is why even advanced pianists use these kinds of exercises like the Hannon book and others um, to, to go back and forth in, in different keys. It does stuff like this. than what we are doing, but you can see why pianists would do these kinds of exercises is all for finger independence. So this week, try to transition from one five-tone scale to the other and get really good at it. You could be a choir teacher before you know it, leading those warm-ups.